All right, we would like to welcome our champion of the 2022 RBC Canadian Open, Rory McIlroy, into the interview room. Rory successfully defends a title on the PGA Tour for the first time, wins on the PGA Tour for the 21st time, and moves into a tie for 31st on the all-time PGA Tour wins list. Rory, if we could just get an opening comment on the victory and what it means to you. And one more than Norman. Um, yeah, it, it means an awful lot. You know, um, I feel like it's getting tougher and tougher to win on the PGA Tour. You know, even just look at the two guys that I played with today. You know, I, I went out with a lead and had to shoot eight under par to get the, get the job done. So, um, you know, the depth of talent on, on this tour is... Um, is really, really impressive. And, you know, going up against guys like JT and Tony and coming out on top, that's, uh, you know, that's something to feel really good about. So, um, you know, super, super happy to, to get that 21st win um, to defend, even though it doesn't feel like it events defense because it's been so long. Um, and then just to, honestly, just to, to play in a final group like that, with that atmosphere all day. I mean, the, the fans here this week have just been absolutely unbelievable. Like, so good and so so cool to play in an atmosphere like that. Boisterous, loud, but respectful. Um, it, was, it was really, really cool. It was really cool to be a part of and um, you know, just really happy to, to, to get the win today. And, um, you know, obviously sets me up well going into next week in Boston, but you know, right now I'm, I just want to enjoy this and, uh, and focus on this. You mentioned the eight under par score today. Uh, 62 ties the lowest final round score by a winner on tour this season. What was the key to the round to, uh, you know, just kept your, your foot on the pedal the whole day? Um, how were you able to do that? Yeah, I think you needed to today. Once, um, so if you look at the scoring uh, Thursday, Friday, compared to, compared to the scoring over the weekend, we had a northerly wind direction Thursday, Friday, which makes the golf course play a little bit tougher. And then we had a southerly wind direction yesterday and today, which, which definitely makes the golf course play, play a touch easier. So I think, you know, seeing the forecast last night and seeing that southerly wind again, I knew I needed to go out and shoot, you know, five, on, five or six under par to, to have a chance to win. So, um, yeah, you needed to keep your foot down. You needed to keep your foot on the pedal. And uh, I got off to a faster start today than I have done the, the previous few days. And, um, you know, you've got that little stretch around the turn, 9, 10, 11, um, where you can make some birdies. And, you know, I just, I just kept it going. Uh, I let them in. I let them back in a little bit after I got the three-shot lead with a couple of missed short ones. But, um, you know, really proud of how I bounced back and um, birdied those last two holes to, to get the job done. All right, we'll take some questions out here. We'll start with John. Thanks. Congratulations, Rory. Thank you. You've accomplished almost everything in the game. Is there a feeling that this win on this very strange and now important week in the world of golf might end up being a bigger part of your legacy than you would have expected before you made the trip to Canada? Um, um, I guess time will tell, but um, it feels really good with, with other things that were going on in the world of golf this week for um, for the Canadian Open, a national championship, to have a week like it's had. Um, three of the best players in the world going at it down the stretch, you know, trying to win in front of those crowds in that atmosphere. Um, that's what I talked about last week at Memorial, talking about a proper golf tournament. Like, that was just, that's as top-notch as you're going to get. And uh, it, was, it was a pleasure to be a part of. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll look back on this, on this week and this, you know, especially today with, with very, very fond memories, um, you know, in terms of what it means for legacy and I don't know, but I just know it feels really good to, to win this week of all weeks. One quick follow-up. How, how, obviously you're proud of the win, but how proud are, are you of the show you, JT and Tony put on today and that the Canadian Open put on this week? Uh, considering everything that's Yeah, I mean, it, it showed out this week. The golf, I mean, I think St. George's is a, is a wonderful golf course. Um, I think it had all the ingredients. It had the golf course. It had the cast of players that you'd want to be up there. <clears throat> it had the caliber of golf, uh, and it had the atmosphere. It, 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 
you had everything this week to um, to have a really top class golf event and um, yeah, as I said, being a part of it, it, it doesn't get much better than that. Go to the left and then over here. Rory, you're talking about this, but I'm just wondering, like, just how much did you want this one? Just given all that's going on and also who you were playing with, the guys at the top of the leaderboard, like, when you were out there, how much did you want this one? Yeah, I wanted it. I wanted it a lot. I wanted it at the start of the day. Um, and there was a few different incentives in there. I... Um, you know, I've I've been up against JT quite a bit in the past, and you know he's he's gotten the better of me a couple of times. So I, I knew I had to play really good to, um, you know, to beat him. Tony as well. Tony played incredible golf today too. Um, so that was a big part of it. I think you know, going up against the best and beating the best is you know always makes it extra special. Um, and then I, I look. I alluded to that, you know I had extra motivation you know of what's going on across the across the pond. Um, the guy that's spearheading that tour has 20 wins in the PGA Tour, and I was tied with him, and I wanted to get one ahead of him, and I did. Um, so that was really cool for me. Just a, a little you know sense of pride on that one. Just uh, quickly on 17, how close was your ball going into the deep rough? Because it seems like there was some good fortune there. Justin obviously goes a bit right. He gets a tough lie. You go into the left rough, but stay in the first cut, and obviously yeah. that was the difference in the tournament. Yeah, that was that was a you know that was a huge swing. Um, I was trying to err on the left side of you know the miss that, rather than the right because I knew that that big tree on the right was you know was going to block you out. So I saw, I guess I had the luxury of seeing the two guys um, hit in front of me and, and both hit it a little bit right. So I just took a line that was a touch further left than that, and as soon as I hit it, I knew that. I, it needed to get down, and, and once I got up there and saw it was in the semi-rough, I was, um, I was really happy with that. It still, you know, it still takes a little bit of control off off the golf ball. I, I landed it probably 15 yards short of the pin and let it release down there, but uh, it's a huge difference playing out of that first cut than it is out of the longer stuff. So yeah, that was that was a big break. Jim, and then if you could pass the microphone up to Adam when you're done. Uh, congratulations, Rory. You, you mentioned earlier that um, this set you up well for Boston. I'm just wondering, playing a course like this that has some similarities to the country club, how much confidence can you can you take into Brookline next week? Yeah, I mean, I think the um, you know it's not it's not as if I you know I win here and then we're going to like Aaron Hills or somewhere like that where it's completely different. You know, it's a similar style of golf. Uh, it'll probably be a similar setup in in some ways. So. You know, I, I'd imagine the greens next week will be a little firmer if they get the weather they want to. But um, overall, I thought it was a great, great week to um, to prepare for the U.S. Open. And um, there's no better way to prepare yourself for tournament golf than to be in contention, having to hit the shots when you need to. And you know, I proved this week that I can do that. And you know, hopefully, get myself back in a position to have to do that again next week. Justin. Rory in the middle here. Sorry, to the right. Congratulations on the win. Um, yeah. You and JT shared an embrace on, on the 18th hole right after he won. I'm just curious if you wouldn't mind revealing what was said and just speak to just how special that was. I know you wanted to beat him, but at the end of the day, you know, you guys are competing and both, you know, really had a great week. Yeah, so um, JP is a, is, or JT is a tough competitor. Um, but he's also a really, really good friend of mine. And uh, I have probably more respect for him than maybe anyone else out here just because I, we both live in South Florida. We practice so much together and I see how much, how hard he works at his craft. And, you know, I, I appreciate that and I respect that. And um, it's always cool to be able to, you know, go up against the best and, and, and come out on top. And, yeah, we had that embrace on the final green, and I just said, let's do this all again next week. That's what I said to him. So, um, you know, that, that would be cool to, to be able to do it all over again with him. Adam and then John. Rory, congrats. Uh, just specifically on your day and even more specifically on your start, how important was it to get out of the gates as fast as you did, especially because Justin was also five under for his first nine holes? Yeah. Um, and Tony wasn't lacking either. I think he was three under. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, it was huge. Like, that was a nice putt on one just to, to get myself into the round. Um, and then the second shot on four was, like, when I hit that shot, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, that was, 
that was probably the best shot I hit today to be able to birdie that, which is a really tough hole. Uh, and then the bonus on the on the sixth hole with the chip in, and but then you know after that I just went on this run and. Um, you, once you see a few birdies go in early, all you're thinking about is making more. And, and, and I just got a little bit of momentum on my side and, and sort of carried that through the rest of the front nine and, and obviously into the start of the back nine as well. Just a quick follow-up on, on process and, and something we talked about early in the week. Obviously, you used a sub-in caddy this week. Uh, how did that kind of go? Was it like, hey, come read this green for me? Or just, no, don't worry about it. I, I got the club. We'll figure it out. Yeah, no, we... Um, yeah, N Niall was great this week. It was, um, you know, so that's the second time uh, he's caddied for me. We finished fourth in Dubai a few years ago and then finished first here. So we're doing okay. Um, so any time that... Um, he needs to fill in for Harry. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about that. But, you know, one of the things for me this week, which I don't do usually, is I was writing, I was pacing out all my yardages, writing all my notes down in my yardage book, and just sort of, you, I was actually, you know, JT and I were having lunch beforehand today, and I was like, I, you know, I had my head in my book a lot more today and was really into my shots and into my golf. And honestly, I think that was, that helped. So, um, you know, I, I, it, it, I take on a little more of the load, but I think it really helped in terms of my mentality and my approach to some shots. So um, I think I'm going to keep, keep doing it at this point because it, I think it was helpful to, to do that again. I've sort of gotten away from that and rely on Harry quite a lot for that sort of stuff. But, you know, it was nice to, to get back into the yardage book this week. John? Congratulations, Rory. Uh, do you consider yourself an honorary Canadian yet? And if not, what will it take? <laughs> hey, I'll take it for sure. Um, you know, the support and the love I've got, um, you know, I've, I've only played in Canada twice, you know, in Hamilton and then here. It's been two pretty good trips, but uh, yeah, the, look, the fans are amazing. Um, you know, they come out and they support this event really well, and I think they just really appreciate the fact that, that we come up here and, and play in your national championship, and um, yeah, you know, if there was some honorary Canadian citizenship bestowed on me, I certainly wouldn't turn it down. I'd, uh, you know, that would be, I would be a very proud thing for me. But no, I'm, uh, I'm happy to come up here once every now and again and play some golf and uh, take this trophy south of the border with me. <laughs> um, as a follow-up, you mentioned the uh, enthusiasm of the fans. Have you ever seen the crowd rush onto the fairway like they did on 18 there and come right up to the green side? Yeah, so I was I was uh, part of the group in East Lake in Atlanta, 2018, when when Tiger got his first win coming back. Uh, geez, it was his first win in a long time. I'm going to say like five years. Uh, I was an afterthought in that group, so um, but I was I was witness to that, and that, that to this day is one of the one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in uh, in my career, and. Um, Today felt sort of similar, maybe maybe not quite the. Well, it was pretty raucous out there, but um, it's really cool whenever whenever that happens and you can enjoy your walk and you know you've got the tournament sewed up, but you know you can take it in and really relish it and enjoy it. And uh, it was a cool scene on 18. Yeah. Time for a couple more. Hey Roy, Pat Forbes with the preferred lie. Uh, growing up in Lynx Heaven. Port Rush, County Down. Is it fair to say that Canadian golf was not on your radar as a teen, and how has it evolved over the last uh, few years? Yeah, a little. I guess a little bit. Um, yeah, I didn't know much about the the golf courses in Canada. I guess um, Hamilton was designed by the same guy that uh, did Port Rush, um, Colt, yeah. right? Um, and I didn't really know much about this golf course. I just, you know, I saw some pictures and um, I've always preferred like this style of golf, parkland golf. I think maybe I, I grew up playing on a parkland, but played a lot of Lynx golf growing up in, in tournaments and probably took it for granted a little bit and, and played so much of it that I always gravitated towards playing more this style of golf because I think something in my mind told me that this is the, this is the type of golf you're going to have to play week in, week out to succeed and, and be a, a successful professional golfer. So um, I started to hit the ball high and I started to try to develop the shots that you need for golf courses like this. And um, it sort of worked out well, but, um, and next week as well. But, 
you know, looking forward to getting back and playing some links golf, um, you know, during that open stretch as well. And as a quick follow-up, in Wednesday's Pro-Am on the 6th tee, I asked you to split 10 rounds. I asked you if you had a preference between St. G's and Hamilton. You gave me a very Ryan Holiday answer of it's too, it's too early to tell. Um, <laughs> could you split 10 rounds between St. G's and Hamilton? How would you spend them? That's a good question. Um, That's a good question. Um, I'd probably go six here for Hamilton. So I just give the favor to here. A little closer proximity to the city. A um, couple, couple more things going for it. Got one on the aisle over here. Hey, Rory, uh, congratulations. I just wonder, in hindsight, the up and down on 14, given how well things had been tracking, and then the first bogey of the day comes along on 13. That up and down on 14, in hindsight right now, seems like a, a pretty big deal. At the moment, in that moment, like how, what was your thought process and, uh, you know, how do you feel about that one? Yeah, it was massive. Um, I think I was, I was so confident with my wedges today that the lie on 14 after the tee shot wasn't, I, I felt like I could have got a five iron on it and, and got it up by the green. And maybe, you know, Previously or a few years ago, I would have tried to do that. <clears throat> but I just knocked it down there to a number that I knew was, was going to be comfortable and, and relied on my wedge play to, to, get, that, to get that up and down. Um, so that was, you know, that's a big step forward for me, something that I you know, probably wouldn't have done previously. And I think just having the confidence in my wedge game, knowing, okay, I can get it up and down from 100 yards, you know, move on to the next and, and no damage is done. So that, that was huge. Got time for two more questions. Uh, we'll take the first over here on the right. Rory, the, um, the PGA Tour and the Canadian Open afford the media such incredible access. It's been awesome to see you guys up close. Um, what don't we see after this? What are, the, what are the hours like after you win something like this? Assuming we can't follow you to where you're going next. These passes don't get us that far, but, <laughs> but, but maybe uh, talk a little bit about what the next few hours will look like that we won't see. Yeah, so um, I'll go straight to the locker room, get all my stuff packed up if it isn't already. Um, give the locker room staff a nice generous tip for all their, all their help this week. Uh, and then get going to the airport. Uh, my wife and daughter are already on the plane, so um, she's probably trying to um, keep her entertained before I get there. Uh, and then just, you get on the flight, go to Boston. Um, yeah, land, get, I mean, yeah, there's, it's not really that, I mean, if, if I'm feeling up to it, you know, when, once I get to the house that we're renting in Boston, I might um, afford myself a glass of wine or two to celebrate. Um, I, give, uh, I give she and Laurie a, a, a ride from... Um, from Jupiter up to Columbus last week, and he brought me a really nice bottle of wine. So that, that's been with us. So uh, maybe, maybe open that if, if I'm not feeling too tired. Uh, and then go to bed and get up again tomorrow and um, go learn a new golf course and, and do it all over again. Got time for one more question uh, on the left aisle over here. Uh, congrats, Rory. Just, um, you know, you won so many tournaments, but how much confidence and belief comes about just winning on a Sunday like this and beating two guys just going into US Open and for the future? Yeah, it does. It gives you a lot of confidence to know that um, just to see where your game stacks up against the best. I mean, JT's coming off winning his second major at the PGA Championship. Um, you know, he's, he's won I think 15 times on tour and you know, he's, he's done a lot in the game and um, and Tony as well. Like Tony, you know, Tony's struggled a little bit the last sort of six to twelve months, but he seems to really turned it around. Had a good finish at Colonial, had another good finish here. So, you know, to to go up against guys that are not just the best players in the world, but best players in the world playing somewhat near their best and coming out on top, that it it can only give you confidence. Um, so yeah, and and I guess for me, just you know, some of the shots that I hit coming down the stretch, you know, I'll. You know, those are things to certainly build on going into the next few weeks. Rory, do you know who the last player to win on the PGA Tour and win a major the following week was? Would that have been me? It would be in 2014. So uh, best of luck next week. Thank you.